Psalm 2 is a great tranquilizer. When you, the more you study about what's happening in the world, in the new world order coming soon, the more nervous you can get if you're not careful. Just read Psalms 2. It'll calm you right down. It's a good tranquilizer. Why do the heathen rage? The people imagine vain thing. The kings of the earth set themselves. The rulers take counsel together against the Lord, against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. God is laughing at their plans for a new world order. You want to read some good books, read uh, Seven Men Who Rule the World from the Grave based on their philosophy. What you believe determines how you behave. That is for sure. Okay? Or if you want to know some things you can do about it in America to help slow things down, be sure to get this book about jury nullification. You know, one person on the jury can just vote not guilty if they don't like the law. The question is not, are they guilty or not? The question is, is the law reasonable? I don't like that law. Not guilty. <laughs> Amazing book. You got to read that. It's just a dollar. Henry Morris has an awesome book <clears throat> about, called The Long War Against God. That is a must read for anybody studying creation and evolution. It's a bitter fruit coming off of an evil tree, folks. Evolution is also the foundation philosophy for the new world order. There's an excellent video you can get from our ministry, Megiddo, Megiddo 1 and Megiddo 2. You want to study the, what's really going on and get, get the whole philosophy of what's happening so you can get the big picture. I recommend call our ministry and get those. We just ordered those here recently. or lots more in our college class, 103. Evil men have already divided up the world into regions, and they've got it all planned. They want to rule the world. Their goal is to reduce the population to a half billion with a few of them as the, right, you know, the, the elite get to rule the world. There's a committee of 300 that basically pulled the strings. Cover, spend all day talking about that. don't have time tonight. But they've got their plans to rule the world, you know, like Pinky and the Brain. What are we going to do today, Pinky? We're going to go take over the world. It's what we always do, you know. God's in heaven laughing about it, okay? If you want to study some of the conspiracies, if you get into that kind of stuff, there have been numerous conspiracies. Get the Medusa file or the American Conspiracy, uh, New American Magazine, the conspiracy, to see what's really happening. We could spend a long time talking about that, uh, about the conspiracy. There's the committee of 300 that really are controlling and pulling the strings, or the Illuminati, top, 300, top 13 bloodlines of the Illuminati, the super rich bazillionaires, the rich who want to rule the world. But that would be for those who want the red pill only, for those who've seen the Matrix. What they do is they, they develop a crisis intentionally so that they can bring in their solution to the crisis. That many events like the Civil War, World War I, the 1929 Depression, they are intentionally caused to make people come in and cooperate, whatever the reason may be. Okay? The 29 Depression was to make everybody get a Social Security number. That was the purpose of that. Cuban Missile Crisis was intentionally done. Okay? Oklahoma City bombing was intentionally allowed to stop the militia movement going on here in America. Call Ben Parton, the Air Force uh, explosives expert. He says, that, that no truck bomb blew up that building. The pillars were sheared off. That was C4 explosives wrapped around the pillars. Many folks are convinced the government was involved in taking down the building in Oklahoma City. And same thing with the Twin Tower bombing. Go to, a, get, the, get the website, 911inplainsight.com. Has anybody seen the movie In Plain Sight? Anybody seen that? David Rockefeller said, we're on a verge of a global transformation. All we need is the right major crisis. And the nations will accept the new world order. See, God has plans for the world, and so does Satan. And Satan's plan is no people here, maybe just a few, and a one world government. The Bible says, perilous times shall come. The people will be fierce, despisers of those that are good. Christians are going to be absolutely hated. You can already see the animosity toward Christians on TV. You know, if, if there's a bad guy in the movie and he's an axe-wielding person, you know, beating everybody up, it's always somebody quoting Bible verses, isn't it? Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. You know why he's out there killing people. They make the Christians and preachers look, look awful on TV. One of the groups to really watch in this plan for the New World Order is FEMA. Boy, they have taken over my city since the hurricanes. <laughs> There's just no question. They are in charge, all right? Just keep an eye on that group. George Bush told the Iraqi soldiers they should disobey if they're given orders to poison gas, to use poison gas, or blow up wells. He said, because after the war, they're going to be judged. Okay, American soldiers, you took a vow to defend the Constitution against enemies foreign and domestic. If you get an order that goes against the Constitution, you better disobey that order. So I'll get court-martialed. Yep, probably so. You do what's right, okay? Who's doing this? What's going on? And what do we do about it? Okay, 
There are all kinds of people involved in this plan toward a new world order. The United Nations, the World Council of Churches. If you go to a church that's a member of that, get out. Okay? Council of Foreign Relations, CFR, the Trilateral Commission. The Bilderbergers, the IMF, International Monetary Fund, the International Bankers, the Club of Rome, the Communists, the Socialists, National, NEA, National Education Association. Get out of that bunch if you're in it. Okay? Uh, now, uh, or ACLU, or the Masonic Lodge. Most people in the Masonic Lodge don't realize what they're in. They think they're in a do-gooders club. And it won't be till it's too late when they realize, wow, this was a satanic organization. Uh, General Albert Pike, 33rd degree Mason, leader of all the Masons years ago, said, this, what, this, that which we must say to the crowd is, we worship a God, but it is a God that one adores without superstition. To you, sovereign grand inspectors general, we say this, that you may repeat it to the brethren of the 32nd, 31st, and 30th degrees. The Masonic religion should be, by all of us initiates of the high degrees, maintained in the purity of the Luciferian doctrine. Yes, Lucifer is God. When the Mason learns... The key to the warrior on the block is the proper appliance of the dynamo of living power. He has learned the mystery of his craft. The seething energies of Lucifer are in his hands. And before he may step onward and upward, he must prove his ability to properly handle energy. Good book on the Masonic Lodge. This one you can get from chick.com or get it from our ministry if you call there. We'll get you some. Excellent book on Masons and what they really, really are for. Okay, what do we do? Real simple. Exactly what Jesus told us to do. He said... Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them, you know, get people saved and teach them to go do the same. You realize Jesus grew up in the middle of the Roman Empire. His country had been taken over. He didn't spend one minute trying to change the Roman Empire. He went after people, win souls. Hosea said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. What do we do? There are perilous times coming to this country and to the world, real serious times. I think probably real soon. I'll be really shocked if we make it five more years. I'm going to be surprised. What do we do? Well, what we need are some men and women who have understanding to know what to do. What should we do? The Bible says, For the transgression of the land, many are the princes thereof. But by a man of understanding and knowledge, the state thereof shall be prolonged. i got four grandkids. Man, I want to prolong the state. I want them to have some freedom and peace to grow up in also like I had. What do I do? Deuteronomy says, take you wise men and understanding. Boy, we need some people with understanding. Solomon prayed and said, give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people that I may discern, discern between good and bad. Do you want to have understanding? The Bible says Abigail was a woman of good understanding. And beautiful. That don't hurt. You don't throw that in too. But okay. They sent him men of understanding. He's, uh, Ezra chapter 8. By the good hand of our God upon us, they brought us a man of understanding. And the children of Issachar, Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. I wish we had some politicians that had understanding of the times to know what America ought to do. I don't think we have too many. Most of the politicians, you know, cut their finger in the wind. Hey, which way are you blowing? Which way is the wind blowing? I'll lead. <laughs> we need some statesmen, not politicians. You know what politics is. Poly means many, and a tick is a blood-sucking animal. But, okay. Okay. I think it's time to get motivated, folks. I don't know what you're doing, but I, it's, it's time to get really moving. We are rapidly running out of time. What do we do? Okay. Number one, you need to realize God's in control. Don't get nervous. Get busy, but don't get nervous. Okay? Where he's the potter. We're the clay. Do what he says. Simple. Okay? We should be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Be careful for nothing, full of care. Don't get nervous. Just get busy. We should pray for those in authority. See, if you were praying for your senators, you would know their names. Wouldn't you? Yeah, okay. We're his children. Our job is to obey him. Preach the gospel, okay? We're supposed to be the salt of the earth. But you know, salt does a lot of interesting things. Salt preserves you should be a preserving force in your community. Salt irritates. If nobody's irritated at you, you're not a good Christian. You say, Brother Hovind, you know there's a thousand anti-Hovind websites? Oh, I know. Ain't it great? <laughs> We're going for 2,000 this year. You ought to be irritating somebody or you're not doing it right, okay? We should use your influence on other people. 
our local uh, science director of science curriculum. I called down there oh, years ago when I was trying to change the curriculum in Escambia County. She was a raving evolutionist. She said, Mr. Hoven, you are the only person who calls in here and complains about the evolution in the textbooks. I thought, where's everybody else? There's 128 Baptist churches in Escambia County, Florida. What are they doing? We're supposed to use our influence, man. Read the, people say Christians shouldn't get in politics. Oh, yeah, tell that to King David or King Solomon, okay? You should teach the truth about creation. One of the greatest ministries available today, I think, is a creation ministry. Find something to do. People will sit and listen to a tape about dinosaurs or creation that will never come to church for any other reason. Won't they, brother? If you get into it now, awesome. You should, there's two great sermons in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 2, Peter preached, you know, on the day of Pentecost. And he quoted scripture after scripture after scripture. He's talking to Jews. That's the way you talk to them. They want to be reasoned with from the scriptures. Acts 17, they go to Mars Hill. He's talking to a bunch of heathen that don't know anything about scripture and don't care. He, Paul didn't quote one scripture in that whole sermon. Acts 17. He said, I want to talk to you about the unknown God, the creator of the universe. God that made the heavens. He used creation to win them. Number nine, don't get distracted. It's so easy in this world, especially in America, to get distracted. How many have ever seen these little mobiles you put over the crib? You wind it up and the kid lays there and goes, oh. <laughs> It's so easy to get distracted. Do you know the average American watches 1,500 hours of TV a year? That's enough time to read your Bible 22 times. I don't think you have to read your Bible all the time, but I mean, you ought to read it some, you know? Speaking of watching TV, Psalmist said, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. Uh, do you put wicked things in front of your eyes? What if you made a rule around your house that if you hear a cuss word on TV, you're going to shut it off for two hours? What if you made a rule that said if you see somebody who's not modestly dressed, you're going to shut it off for two hours? If you see somebody drinking alcohol, you're going to shut it off for two hours. How much would you watch? Well, we could all cancel that cable and we could support 45 more missionaries just out of this room, couldn't we? Bible says, for the transgression of the land, many are the princes thereof. You know why we got so many bureaucrats, so many rules and regulations? We're wicked. This is God's judgment. Okay? All this heavy-handed government is God's judgment on our country. We deserve it. Righteousness exalteth the nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Here's the solution. You want to help save America? It's real simple. Here's the solution. If my people, which are called by my name, shall vote Republican, join the militia, and stir, store up survival foods. <laughs> uh, it's not quite what it says, is it? If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. Hey, dads. When's the last time your kids saw you humble yourself? Hey, when's the last time your kids saw you come to the altar and pray for somebody? When's the last time your kids saw you pray for anything? When's the last time your kids heard you say, I'm sorry, I was wrong? Moms, when's the last time you humbled yourself? Kids, when's the last time you humbled yourself? When's the last time you told your brother, look, brother, I'm sorry, I was wrong, forgive me? When's the last time? Humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn off their wicked TVs. Or, no, turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. Do you want God to straighten out this mess? He'll do it. He's waiting on us. We do our part, He will do His part. I like this story. Eliab, David's older brother, Talked a little. David came to deliver the cheese and the raisins and stuff, you know, to the army. Eliab said, uh, what are you doing here? Why did you come down here? Go back and feed the sheep. And David said, is there not a cause? Uh, brother, that big old Philistine's out there cursing your God. What are you doing back? Go take his head off. Is there not a cause? Man. Little David comes from taking care of the sheep, sees the big old giant and says, Somebody ought to shut him up. 
He's out there cursing the God of Israel. And Eliab, his big brother's yelling at him, shut up, brother, go back home, take care of the sheep. We're the soldiers. Is, hey, is there not a cause? What is your cause? What do you live for? Psalm 2 is a great tranquilizer. When you, the more you study about what's happening in the world, in the new world order coming soon, the more nervous you can get if you're not careful. Just read Psalms 2. It'll calm you right down. It's a good tranquilizer. Why do the heathen rage? The people imagine vain thing. The kings of the earth set themselves. The rulers take counsel together against the Lord, against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. God is laughing at their plans for a new world order. You want to read some good books, read the seven men who rule the world from the grave based on their philosophy. What you believe determines how you behave, that is for sure, okay? Or if you want to know some things you can do about it in America to help slow things down, be sure to get this book about jury nullification. You know, one person on the jury can just vote not guilty if they don't like the law. The question is not, are they guilty or not? The question is, is the law reasonable? I don't like that law, not guilty. <laughs> Amazing book, you got to read that, it's just a dollar. Henry Morris has an awesome book <clears throat> about, called The Long War Against God. That is a must-read for anybody studying creation and evolution. It's a bitter fruit coming off of an evil tree, folks. Evolution is also the foundation philosophy for the new world order. There's an excellent video you can get from our ministry, Megiddo, Megiddo 1 and Megiddo 2. You want to study the, what's really going on and get, get the whole philosophy of what's happening so you can get the big picture. I recommend call our ministry and get those. We just ordered those here recently. or lots more in our college class, 103. Evil men have already divided up the world into regions, and they've got it all planned. They want to rule the world. Their goal is reduce the population to a half billion with a few of them as the, right, you know, the, the elite get to rule the world. There's a committee of 300 that basically pulled the strings. We cover, we spend all day talking about that. I don't have those who've seen The Matrix. What they do is they... They develop a crisis intentionally so that they can bring in their solution to the crisis. That many events like the Civil War, World War I, the 1929 Depression, they are intentionally caused to make people come in and cooperate, whatever the reason may be. Okay? The 29 Depression was to make everybody get a Social Security number. That was the purpose of that. Cuban Missile Crisis was intentionally done. Okay? Oklahoma City bombing was intentionally allowed to stop the militia movement going on here in America. Call Ben part-time tonight. They've got their plans to rule the world. You know, like Pinky and the Brain. What are we going to do today, Pinky? We're going to go take over the world. It's what we always do, you know. <laughs> God's in heaven laughing about it, okay? If you want to study some of the conspiracies, if you get into that kind of stuff, there have been numerous conspiracies. Get the Medusa file or the American Conspiracy, uh, New American Magazine, the conspiracy, to see what's really happening. We could spend a long time talking about that, uh, about the conspiracy. There's the Committee of 300 that really are controlling and pulling the strings, or the Illuminati, top, 300, top 13 bloodlines of the Illuminati, the super-rich bazillionaires, the rich who want to rule the world. But that would be for those who want the red pill only. For